So it's Sunday evening, it's the last day of the weekend and you are just trying to relax. So you decide to watch a movie, you're watching Star Wars. And throughout the movie you're sitting on the edge of your seat, you know, hoping the rebels will finally make that striking blow against the evil empire. Because the evil empire has to be eradicated. The evil empire is trying to expand that territory, you know, trying to suppress other people. It is something that cannot endure and must be eradicated, no matter the cost. So at the end of the movie, the rebels finally make that striking blow against some Death Star or some command post. And you cheer because you are happy because the rebels are finally one step closer to destroying the empire. Let me get you out of the dream. In real life, you are the empire. In real life, you are not a rebel. In real life, the West is the empire. And if you are some blue pillar who is like fully in favor of the government and you know basically treating your government as your new god, you're not gonna like this video and you better just click off this video right now. If you are somebody who is you know finally discovering how the world really works, maybe you've already taken the red pill, this is this is a video for you and you're really gonna like this. So the rebels versus the empire. So in the movies, the rebels are always the good guys. And there are so many movies like this, the rebels versus the evil empire, always the same. You've, we've got like the whole Star Wars franchise, we've got like the Hunger Games where Katniss Everdeen is trying to like topple the system. There's like, um, there's another movie called Divergent, where there's another girl trying to <laughs> destroy the system. There are so many movies like this, and it's it's quite funny because in the eyes of the Empire, the rebels are actually the terrorists, right? They are actually the bad guys because they basically endanger the whole Empire, the whole existence of the Empire. So they must be destroyed. These terrorists, rebels, must be destroyed. So it's all about perception. So what's your viewpoint? Like if you're viewing it from the empire side, the, the rebels are the terrorists. But if you, are, if you are viewing it from the rebel side, the empire is evil and, and basically is suppressing them and must be destroyed. So yeah, why does nobody actually support the empire? So it's always in the movies, we are always viewing it from the rebel side. But why aren't there any movies from the empire side? This is very interesting. Like why is the empire bad? Well, you could say that the empire is trying to expand and it's trying to like destroy some region in favor of them. Like they are doing evil shit, right? <laughs> and one other question I was asking myself, like who is the empire? Because if we are, this is just a movie, right? But we could actually like, movies are sometimes made to reflect reality right so if we could actually ask ourselves right now who is the empire in the real world and who are the rebels we might actually say that the rebels might be some like terrorists like like isis or Qaeda, maybe some people who are against the empire some some individuals who are against the government here around us um in real life it's actually like quite funny right because in real life, we would actually say that the terrorists are the bad guys. And we, as the empire, are the good guys. Our government, our Western government, are the good guys, right? But why do we actually support the empire right now? Because our Western civilization is the empire. And that is because the empire in the movies is much more evil than our empire, right? Well. I would actually say that that's not really the case. And in our real world, we actually hate the rebels. We hate those individuals who are standing out from the group. <laughs> so who is the empire? Well, that's the question because I would actually say that we are the empire and we are not such good guys. We always tell ourselves that we are the good guys, that we wanna expand our freedom, but just to name a few examples of why we are not necessarily the good guys, right? I would actually say that we are just as bad as the evil empires in Star Wars and these other movies. Because just to name a few, like the war in the Middle East, like one of the reasons, like America actually um, attacked seven countries in the Middle East. And the start of this was actually like the whole Twin Tower thing, but 
just because it, just because there was one terrorist attack doesn't mean America has to invade and bomb the shit out of seven whole countries. That's like a bit out of perspective. Can I say uh, first we support your war of terror? And one of the reasons, like, uh, for example, America invaded Iraq was because Iraq had weapons of mass destruction. They actually told everybody that, but that wasn't actually the case. So weapons of mass destruction is like nuclear weapons and, stu and such. But before the war, there was actually like people of US personnel on the ground who actually told the government there are no weapons of mass destruction here. But they invaded anyway on the suspicion that there were weapons of mass destruction which they knew there weren't any and they basically like um <laughs> bombed the shit out of that whole country and basically killed the leader and if you actually see like video material photos from before the war in syria iraq um, libya you actually see that these countries were doing like just fine you know it was actually kind of beautiful looking but now that that place is basically burned to the ground you know <laughs> just boom not just like military targets but also civilian targets like the thing we are doing right now we are just sending our like drones over these countries which are basically um operated from america and we are basically bombing that country still we are doing lots of coups and a coup is basically um, when when we try to topple the government so we topple that government and we try to install a new one which is basically our guys so we basically take over a whole country just by replacing the leadership so and that's a very interesting one because we have like assassinated a lot of leaders from countries like <laughs> especially in like south america and another very interesting example of a coup is actually the coup in ukraine in 2014 so maybe you don't know about this but america played a huge part in the coup in like 2014 and that's like part of the reason why we are at war right now because another way is we as an empire are making debt slaves so this is modern colonialism so back in the days we used to just go into a country with a lot of force just to take that nation but today we do it a little more like underground so we basically grant huge sums of money which have a very very high interest rate right so we tell them that we are giving away free money so we are such good guys we're giving away free money but actually we just give away a loan which that country has to pay interest on and oftentimes america will push that poor nation just to take a huge amount of money just to lend a huge amount of money so that they can't even pay off that low so what does america do they will tell them that oh no problem you don't have to pay but just give us that 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 factory just give us a few oil fields and then just give us a few of your best companies then they will basically control that whole country because those companies are more powerful than the government so that's like modern colonialism, right? And of course, we have our famous money system, our famous fiat system where we print money like fucking crazy. We, as people, have to work like really, really hard to get just to pay the bills, you know, to get a bit of money, but our government just prints. Our government can make unlimited money for itself and buy anything it wants. So most people are blind. Most people haven't even heard of these things or they think that's, that this is a good thing. Like the war in the Middle East, the war on terror is a good thing because, because there, there are uh, some terrorists there. So we have to bomb the whole country, like fucking madness. They, they will actually sell. And there was actually some kind of a news article in our newspaper as well from like uh, 20 years ago where we actually told America like we support your war on terror just like like Borat right <laughs> so 
And it's the same thing with coops, you know, some people would say that that's a good thing because we have to assassinate that dictator. And America just tells people that that's a dictator, we have to assassinate him and, and, that, and the people will say, yeah. <laughs> so the West is the empire and it's much more extreme than in the movies actually. And most of us don't know it. So it's actually quite like scary. Like most of us don't even know about these things or think that, that these things are good things. Yay, bombing seven countries. Like we cheer for that, right? Like, fucking retarded. And in real life, we are supporting the empire. Most of us, 95% of people are supporting the empire for its actions. And we hate the rebels because they are, they are a danger to our, to our, you know, democracy. <laughs> so it's quite funny because, so it's quite funny in all these movies, the rebels are actually the good guys and the empire are the bad guys. But in real life, it's like the other way around. Like the rebels are the bad guys and the empire is the good, is the good guy, right? So that's why I told you, right? Why aren't there any movies from the Empire's perspective? Because in real life, we are looking from the Empire's perspective and all these poor nations in the third world countries are looking at us from rebel perspective. They are basically seeing us as bad. And not, I'm not talking about the whole nation, not everybody is seeing us as bad, but a lot of them are. So why do we support the empire? And so many people like view the government as their new God. Like the government can do nothing wrong. Like they support the government no matter what. Even if the government decides to like kill innocent people on the streets, they would probably still support the government. Like, <laughs> yeah, it was necessary because these were uh, terrorists or they were conspiracy theorists and they, they are a danger to our democracy, right? Like people will defend the empire no matter what. Like, like it's fucking crazy, right? I had some, you know, some friends. I had a friend group and a huge part of that friend group were like blue pillars. They were in favor of the government. The government could do nothing wrong. So whenever I like spoke out against like the empire, they would actually like kind of attack me. They would attack me the whole time. Like everybody against me so they will actually do everything in their power to defend the empire like verbally or even like with force if, if it has to so they will support their actions and they will even hate their enemies like if the empire tells them to hate this specific person they will hate him no matter what logical nations they they have if the empire tells them what to think they will think that specific thing and this is very interesting. This is the same thing with the, the, the book 90, 1984. Maybe you have like read this book. I've actually like just read this book and it's very interesting. So in the movie they have like one common enemy and it's like Emmanuel Goldstein. So in the movie they have actually got something called the two minutes of hate. So whenever they are at their work, they will have something that's called like two minutes of hate. They will actually come together in the canteen and shout at Emmanuel Goldstein for two minutes long. Like all kinds of things, like very aggressive. And just because the government, in sock is it called, is it called, tells them that you should hate that specific person. So we are now being told that we should hate Russia, Russian people, we should hate Putin, we should hate uh, people in the Middle East because they, they are all terrorists and like, fucking pretty dangerous actually so and i would actually say that we as an empire are much more effective than things like like and the empire in star wars the empire in the hunger games because we actually have a thing called propaganda and propaganda is so fucking effective it's unbelievable so and why is propaganda so effective because it's not just one thing. We have been like proper, we have been indoctrinated our whole lives everywhere we look. And so propaganda can change our whole viewpoints. So what propaganda does, it is basically saying to you that, yeah, yeah, just believe us, we are the good guys. So young, it starts with the school system, right? So when you are four years old, you go to school, and you are being <laughs> AKA, uh, mandatory government indoctrination camps. <laughs> 
So when you go to school for the first time, and I think it's mandatory to stay in school until like 18 or 17 years old, you are being taught that you should be obedient, that you should just follow everything that the group does, because if you don't, you stand out and you are bad. It's bad to stand out. You're being told all these woke uh, things. And, and another thing is our movies, right? And you don't even realize it when it's like being propagated in movies because there will be a lot of movies like, uh, you have a lot of these like woke idealism movies where there would be like a family. And of course, one of these family members is, 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 is black and one is white. They, they got mixed together. So they have got a few kids and one of these kids is like a lesbian. The other is like a feminist. And, and, and the boy, of course, is like very feminine. And, and all these things are basically um, changing your viewpoints about about these topics and of course we've got like the newspapers and, and the news of course but that's like um, for, for, for so many people that's like very obvious but for other people they don't know about this and it's basically the only the only news they basically share is like <laughs> fake news stories from their perspective. They try to convince you of a certain perspective. So yeah, propaganda is highly effective, like very, very, very effective. Uh, if you want to know how effective, just look at Nazi Germany in the 1940s. That's propaganda. Um, so we are the empire. And most of us don't even realize who we are. We are the bad guys, but we don't even realize it. And that's why it's so effective because we tell ourselves that we are the ones that are doing good. We tell ourselves that we are liberating all these other countries, that we are liberating Iraq, Operation Iraqi Freedom, right? Like, but we are actually like the bad guys. And so it's very interesting because the one with the power makes the rules. And that's how it works in our nation. If you have the power, you can make the rules. You can change the rules. You can make sure you stay on top. So uh, a thing like if you are powerful and you're making the, that. So that's a thing called social Darwinism. So social Darwinism is basically the, the thing that people will see your authority as something good because you are more powerful so because you are powerful you have the the right to rule over others like that's same with slavery slavery right because you have the power you have the right to to own these people to own these slaves so social darwinism is a is a, is a big thing in today's society like the government thinks it can make the rules and basically let you do whatever they want because they have the power and they are basically rigging the game to their advantage so they will stay on top so they can earn more money so like what about rigging monopoly just because like the government huh? just because they make the rules so should they be able to cheat should they be able to get unlimited money so let's say i am playing monopoly just because I am playing the bank, like I am, I'm, I'm handling all the money, right? Doesn't mean that I get unlimited money. <laughs> if I would get unlimited money as the bank, you would say I'm cheating, right? So that's the same thing the government does. So they will make sure they will stay on top no matter what. So they will, because they are so powerful, they can make sure they stay on top. They can make sure you will never grow as a person. So for a few to live, many must die. That's a very, very interesting one. For a few to be rich, many must be poor. For a few to be successful, many must be unsuccessful. That's like the 80-20 rule. And it's like very, very interesting. It's also in our current system, for a few to be rich, so the, th so the, the first world countries like the West, Many must be poor because these poor nations are basically funding our great nation. So this is a bit off topic, but I've just opened my new community and I'm very proud of it. It's like a place, a community where young men come together to talk about like self-improvement, fitness, and we do like weekly community calls. You'll get like a workout plan, a diet plan. So, you, so I'll make sure you will become successful in this. Spartans, prepare for glory.